What a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. He's wonderful, wonderful Jesus to me. Counselor, Prince of Peace, mighty God is he. He's saving me, keeping me from all sin and shame. Wonderful is my Redeemer, praise his name. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty one more time. He's wonderful, wonderful Jesus to me. Counselor, Prince of Peace, mighty God is he. He's saving me, keeping me from all sin and shame. Wonderful is my Redeemer, pray his name. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Amen. And he is a mighty God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. This joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me Well, this joy that I have The world didn't give it to me Oh, this joy that I have The world didn't give it to me The world didn't give it and the world can take it away Hallelujah! Well, to me this peace that I have the world didn't give it to me oh this peace that I have the world didn't give it to me the world didn't give it the world can't take it away hallelujah well this love to me this love that I have the world didn't give it to me oh this love that I have the world didn't give it to me the world didn't give it the world can take it away I gotta do that one more time well this love that I have the world didn't give it to me, this love that I have. The world didn't give it to me, no, this love that I have. The world didn't give it to me, the world didn't give it, the world can't take it away. Jesus gave it to me, Hallelujah. and the world can't take it away. Jesus gave it to me, and the world can't take it away. Oh, Jesus gave it to me, and the world can't take it away. Jesus gave it, and the world can't take it away. Song where it says the joy, the peace, the love, 
We found out in the prayer this morning that nobody can give that like Jesus can. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. That's Amen. right. Praise God. And we've been having uh, just, uh, our service starts at 930 in the morning. And uh, we are here and yet we don't, um, we don't normally turn on our Facebook um, viewing until we actually get up here. But we've been having some wonderful times of just gathering um, for prayer. The Lord's been really moving in our prayer. It's, so um, we'd love to have you join us in the church because uh, you're missing out on that prayer time here. <laughs> Amen? Yes, but, uh, yes. We're praying for you, and we love you, and I'm just thankful. You know, it's not anything we've done. It's what the Lord's done. And we're just, uh, we're hung we've been hungry for him. Amen? And, That's right. Uh, he's been coming and meeting us and filling us up, and uh, our prayer times have been uh, precious here yes, in the church. Yes. And, uh, I thank God for that, and uh, we need that. We we need that. We need to go to the Lord in prayer before we do anything. I think, and uh, ask for Him to come and to bless and to move. So, I'm not apologizing for starting a little bit later, maybe, but we didn't really start late. We started right at 9:30, <laughs> so uh, we just had some prayer time together, and uh, we want you to know that maybe at 9:30, if we're not on and you don't see us, maybe just close your eyes wherever you're at and just kind of join us in prayer yes. and amen and uh, say lord i'm with them right now wherever they're praying about and maybe even bring your own petitions to the lord at that time so maybe that'd be a time for you to just uh, come to the lord in prayer as well amen yes just, amen once i was close in the rights of my sin wretched Lost and lonely within, but with wondrous compassion, the King of all kings, in pity and love, He took me under. child of the king his royal blood now flows in my veins and I who was wretched and so vile now can sing praise God praise God I'm a child Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. 
with everything I have. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Linda. That's our prayer, amen. Lord, take me, use me, fill me, guide me. Help me to keep you in my heart, realizing that you are the potter and we are the clay, amen. We need him so, so much. Hallelujah. I tell you, we've had, um, we don't have a large congregation, those of us maybe that join us through Facebook, so I shouldn't say we don't, because I think we do have quite a few people that join us on a weekly basis, and we want to say thank you for doing that, and we're glad and honored to have you with us. We pray that you've been uh, encouraged and blessed, and you've been feeling what we've been feeling over the past several months because uh, we've really been feeling his presence in this church in a sweet, sweet way. I know I'm getting a little emotional here, but uh, been that way all morning long. And I, I say it and I'll say it again. If people can get emotional over a hockey puck that goes down one center of the aisle to the other and crashes into some sort of board and everyone goes crazy over a pig skin that can go 50 hundred yards both ways and people go crazy over that and people go crazy over someone that hits a home run and he's this and that and you know they can get all excited over all that and fall over each other and act crazy and stupid and scream and holler and no one says nothing about it it's just normal but let someone get a little emotional about Jesus give him some glory and honor tell people oh man we had a wonderful service today Oh, we felt his presence in such a mighty way. They look at you like, what's wrong with you? You've lost your mind. You're just an emotional bunch. Yeah, we are an emotional bunch that serve an emotional God that touches us, that's real. We can feel him. We come in here, we're not perfect. We have issues, we have problems, we have struggles we face all week long. But thank God when we get together, his presence comes. His spirit moves in our hearts. Even before, I know I'm losing my voice, even before we get here, the Holy Spirit is ministering to us and speaking to us. One sister said this morning as she was driving here, she just said, oh God, I just feel so empty inside this morning. I appreciated her honesty and her sincerity. She said, I just feel so empty. But when we got done praying, she said, I don't feel that way anymore. I've lost my voice and I haven't even preached. <laughs> Hallelujah. She said, I don't feel that way anymore. She said, I feel God's presence. I feel the devil doesn't want you to feel God's presence. The devil doesn't want you to be ministered to. The devil doesn't want the Holy Spirit to come and touch us because Lord knows we all need God's presence. I don't want to just come, as Pastor Ron says many times, I don't want to just come and have a service. I don't want to just come and go through the motions and say, oh, that was a good song. And, you know, I want to come, and I, when I come, just like you, I believe God is ready. He's waiting on us. God is not waiting around wondering what we're doing. He's waiting for us to do something. The heavens is excited about us getting together and lifting up the name of Jesus. The heavens are waiting for us to do something. People are saying, I don't feel God. I don't know where God is. I'll tell you, God hasn't won anywhere. God is still here. He's moving. He's alive. He's real. The Holy Spirit is moving. I don't care what people say. I believe the Holy Spirit is moving like never before. Yeah. There is an apostasy that's going on in the world, in the nation that's taking place today. It's prevalent everywhere. It seems like no matter what you talk about, people about people are losing their desire for church. They're losing their desire for the things of God. 
There's no longer a hunger. There's no longer a, a cry for God any longer in the church or for people to get close to God any longer. I'm not saying that's every. I know it's not going to contradict myself because I believe there is a cry. I believe there is a hunger. But I also believe in my heart just by the things I've been watching and the things I've been seeing. There is this 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 place. Actually, there's a word that is being called right now. I don't know if you heard about it, but it's called nuns. It's not N U N. S, it's N-O-N-E-S. And there it's a new, it's been going on for quite a few years now. It's a new, this this new kind of a, I don't know what you want to call it. It's it's this new era that's going through the whole world, and they're called nuns. There are people that were once in church, once served the Lord. Some of them, uh, whatever, maybe they didn't grow up in serving the Lord or wasn't in church, but their desire no longer is for the things of God. They even say, why, why go to church? What does it matter? They're so caught up with, and they say that the nuns, N-O-N-E-S, has, is, is even grown more stronger, and they're statistically, they're, they're even bigger than the evangelical church or the, the Catholic church, even in America now. And they say the reason for it is because there's been prosperity in the country. There's been things that's come and, and, and have taken people away from God. People no longer want to spend time in God's word. People no longer want to spend time reading or praying or seeking God. They say, why well, go to church? What does it matter? I'm telling you right now, it matters. It matters. It matters. It matters. And uh, the devil is out there like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's trying to draw people away from God like never before. But I believe in the midst of all that's going on, when you see it on TV, you look at it, there's hatred, there's, there's, there's things going on that you just, you sit and you scratch your head and you wonder, man, is this really America? But I believe in the midst of all this, God is raising up an army. There's a remnant that's coming out of this. There's a people that's hungry for God. There's a people that's crying out saying, no, we will not be deceived. We will not be taken away by the things of the world and be caught up into the air of whatever. It's like if you're not in that place where everyone is, you're, you're ostracized. You're no longer considered to be a part of humanity almost. If you don't believe in the way they believe, if you don't think the way they think, they think you're stupid, you're, you're ridiculous. I don't call, call me whatever you want. I know one thing, I know Jesus Christ. He came, he died, he rose, he lives, he saved me, he forgave me, he lives in my heart and my life. I'm convinced like Paul, no matter what happens, I'm gonna keep living for God. Has it been tough? Oh, yes. Has it, has it been, it's been a rough road at times? Oh, yes. Have I had my struggles? Oh, yes. Have I fallen down even this week? Oh, yes. I, you know what? I'm, I'm just being as honest as I can do. Have I had doubted God at times? Oh, yes. Have I been confused at times? Oh, yes. Have I been stressed out? I sound like Paul. We've been distressed. We've been persecuted. We've been left to peril. But thank God that Jesus Christ, he fills us with his power and with his presence. And he gives me a reason to keep living for him. There's no other life out there outside of knowing God in a personal way, in an intimate way. Regardless of what Hollywood says or what the celebrities say or regardless of what they paint on TV and what they, they put in. I'm telling you right now, I think some of us just need to turn off the TV. Amen. Turn off this negativism. Turn off the violence. Turn off the killing. Oh, you want to just act like nothing's going on? No, I'm not saying that. But, you know, there's killings and there's all this stuff going on. And then we end up watching a movie about it, too. It's like we're just we're desensitized to the things around us. There's no longer a cry out, oh, God, save this world. Save people. Draw them to you, Lord. Help me, God, to be a light to people. And there's no more. I'm telling you what I see. There's such a, I don't know, I've, Am I preaching? I haven't even read anything yet, have I? I there's no longer love for people any longer. There's, there, it's like we pick and choose who we love. We pick and choose who we care about. We pick and choose what we think about people. God forbid, that's not what God wants us to be doing. We're supposed to love everybody. We're supposed to care for everybody. We're supposed to forgive everyone that's hurt us. I know I, I even heard that on the prayer breakfast after uh, the day after Trump was... Um, he was, what did they call it? He was acquitted. acquitted, thank you. The day after he was acquitted, he was found not guilty, whatever you want to call it. 
The day after, they had a prayer breakfast, and I guess the, he was, it was at the White House, and, the, and um, you know, he was there at the prayer breakfast, and he even spoke at the prayer breakfast. The next day after this happened, now, he had had a lot of people that were saying horrible things about him, and I'm not going to get into the political end of it, but I guess one of the speakers there that day, he was a minister, and his text was about forgiving people and, and letting things go. And, you know, the president got up, and I heard it myself on the radio. He said, no, this is a hard one for me to do, but I'm going to try. You know, I, I appreciated that honesty. Yeah. I'm going to at least try. You know, you got to start somewhere. Well, I'm not going to forgive them. Look what all they've done to me. Look what they did to the terms. Look what they did to blah, blah, blah. Look what they did. Look what they did to Jesus. What did they do to Jesus? And what did he say? In his final words, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. If he said it, surely I should be able to say it. And if he forgave me, I should be able to forgive everyone else. That, you know, we, we categorize sin. One sin is just as bad as the other. Or some might be more detrimental. Some might have more of a lasting and uh, a devastating effect on our lives. But sin is sin. And Jesus died for all of us. And, and he paid the price. Sin was put upon him. Every sin, every vile thing that you can think of. He bore my sin. He bore the sin of the whole world. He, he didn't just die. He took our sin. Hallelujah, man. Ought to make you run and shout. Quit looking at yourself the same way and saying, I'm no good. I'm lousy. I'm a has-been. I'm nothing. You know what? God, I'm, uh, if I can get there. God's hallelujah. God spoke to me a few weeks ago. That's been, it's been a, actually a few months ago. I think now a month and a half ago, God spoke to me one night. I know I heard it as plain as day. God ever speak to you? I think God's trying to speak to all of us. I think he'd speak to me more if I just take time to listen. If I just spend time, you know, how does he speak to you? Sometimes audibly, I can hear him inside. You know what I'm saying? I hear him. Sometimes he'll speak to me in the night. I, I, he'll wake me up, and I know for sure I heard his voice. I, you know, sometimes he'll speak to me through my wife. He'll speak to me through a message, right? He'll, he speaks a lot to me through Nicole, a whole lot. She doesn't have to say a whole lot to me, but I hear the Holy Spirit speaking to me through her. You know, and, and, and the language that she uses, her body language is, is uh, the Lord uses her to speak to me. I've said that many times. I don't know. I think there's a great deal to be said in suffering and how God can use it to speak to our hearts and our lives. <clears throat> but the Lord spoke to me one night and I'm, I'm just before, you know, and, and, and after he had spoke to me, I was having a really bad week. Nicole wasn't feeling good. I hadn't had much sleep that week. And sometimes when she doesn't feel good, I don't get a lot of sleep because she doesn't sleep good through the night, so I'm up through the night. I'm not trying to make you feel bad for me. It just It's the way it is. God helps me. He provides for me. Or, man, I, I get my naps through the day or whatever I got to do to make, make ends meet. Amen? I realize this, though. I got to take care of myself. If I don't take care of myself, I got a lot of other things to take care of. Amen? So I'm going to make sure I take care of me. I think God, Pastor Ron, got better so he can help me work out. <laughs> now, sometimes he can be a little tough on me. And I said, I know you're getting better because you're working awful hard at this. <laughs> but, you know, the Lord, he was come to us, you know, and he'll speak to us. And when he spoke to me this particular night, he spoke to me two nights in a row. And it was very powerful to me. And I wasn't sure exactly what he was saying. And yet... I felt like he'd had me take a look at uh, the that same day, the look at Psalms 139. That's the scripture that came to my heart after the, the Lord spoke to me. Before I share that, when he spoke to me, I'm going to read this. Father, thank you for your prayer, power, your grace, your spirit, your love. Thank you, God, that you see us, our frailty. You see us, Lord. As we are, and yet you love us, God, and you want us to be all that we can be for you, Lord. And You're here, Lord. You're wanting to fill our hearts and our lives with your spirit, with your power. Lord, let us realize, God, that we are the body of Christ, and it's our time to rise up, Lord, and stand up and be that voice, Lord. Be that hand, be that extended arm that reaches out for the body of Christ, Lord. Father, in a world that's hurting and dying all around us, God, I pray that 
what we share today and what we've already shared, Lord, would speak into our hearts and into our lives and draw us closer to you, God, and help us, Lord, to be people separated down to you, Lord, that we can bring you honor and glory, Lord. Pray for every person that's watching today. Maybe they're feeling discouraged or downcast or, 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 or feeling lonely, God. And Lord, I pray that you'd lift their spirits up today. Bring encouragement into their hearts and into their spirits, Lord, and touch them, Lord. And Lord, let them know that God, through you and by you, they can do anything, Lord. That nothing's impossible with you, God. And that you see them, Lord, and you're there for them, Lord. Father, bless, Lord, our the remaining time of this service and all that you've been doing at this church. God, thank you, thank you, thank you. Father, for your sweet spirit, we don't ever want to take it for granted, Lord. And I want to just give you all the praise this morning in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. And in this, this particular psalm of David, he's... It's a powerful psalm. People spoke about this psalm and read about it. And it, it, it says so much about God's, um, his, God's loving arm in our lives and his, his heart towards us. And I'm reading out the New Living Translation this morning. David said, oh, Lord, you've examined my heart. You know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know, my every thought went far away. <laughs> Aren't you glad? <laughs> Aren't you glad? I'm so glad that he knows my every thought. It's scary sometimes when he knows more about me than I know about myself. And one thing I can say about the Holy Spirit is he'll prick your heart and say, hey, you might as well just fess up because I know what you're thinking anyway. Amen. I know what you're going through anyhow. You might as well just give it to me right now because you know I know what you're thinking about. And yet he loves us anyway. Good thoughts, bad thoughts, he loves us anyway. He said, I'm going to try to get through this. You pray for me. I know everything about, you know everything about me. Man, that's, I don't know, does that, I don't, I know, I could just probably preach just from these two verses right here. You know everything about me. Man, who knows everything about you? Not too many people. You know, you let your guard down, you might let them see some things. You know, and you know we, and sometimes I think it's okay not to let it totally down because people just have a tendency to want to take darts and throw at you, right? And that's a shame because we shouldn't be that way. The, James says we should confess our faults one to another and bear one another's burdens, but we've come so far from that anymore. People are afraid to do that, so there's no one that people can even talk to to share with about things and get it off their chest. And yet there are people out here. There are those you feel comfortable with. There are those that you can say, hey, my heart's hurting. There's things going on. Can you pray for me? And that's really how it should be. We should have that camaraderie. We should have that closeness. You know, I, I heard uh, something I read not too long ago that, you know, I could tell my mom anything. You know, that's kind of true how it was, you know. For me, I could tell my mom, and she never, you know, she might give her opinion, but no matter what I told her, it didn't seem to make a god darn difference, right? I didn't swear at god darn, right? Golly, I said, I said, man, my mom loves me no matter what. I can tell her anything about me, and she loves me. And you know what? Even more than that, the Lord loves me even more than my mom did. Yeah, I can tell him anything, anything. So why not just fess up and start talking to him? Well, when I get rid of this in my life, then I'll go to God. Or, you know, I, I don't want to take this to the Lord. The Lord, you're the, that's the one you need to take it to. Right now, just take it to Jesus. Amen. Just give it to him, because he's the only one that can really help you anyway. You know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my every thought when far away. He knows your very thoughts. He knows everything you're thinking. Even when my thoughts are far away from him, he still knows them. Man, and I felt the Lord, when I read this, now I'm reading this to you, now please, but when the Lord gave, had me read this, it was like, it was the first time I had read it that next day. The Lord had spoke to me that night, and it was like the first time I'd ever read it, and it wasn't the first time. I'd read this many, many times and heard it preached, but it was like the first time I'd ever heard it. And when I was reading it, my heart was just, oh... Thank you, God. Thank you, God. It was like the Lord was just coming and taking his arms and wrapping them around me and just saying, I, you know, Chris, you think you're in this all alone, buddy, but you're not. 
You're not. And I just want you to know today that God, there might be someone thinking, I'm in this all alone, but you're not. God knows everything that's going on. He's working it out. He's on your side of you. Let him be. He's going to be there for you. He's going to straighten it out. He's going to work it out. He's going to bring you through this no matter what you go through. Because I'm telling you, God's done it for me time and time and time and time and time again. Amen. I can testify to that, that God always brings me through. Yes. It might be a hard thing. It might not be the way I wish it would have went. It might be like Paul when he was out on that ship and it just all fell apart. And everyone grabbed on to little pieces of, of the ship. But you know what? He was wise as grab on to something because if you grab on to it, God's going to get you through it. And sometimes just grabbing on to just to something little, maybe a verse, maybe a Bible story, maybe a message you heard, maybe a prayer someone said, just grab on to that baby and hang on. Because God's going to bring you through it. I don't know, I'm preaching to somebody today, if not just to myself, amen? I'll probably have to listen to this at the end of the week. God help me. <laughs> Someone call me up and say, Pastor Chris, you better get a hold of that message you shared Sunday. Might be my wife. <laughs> just gave me that look. <laughs> he said, you chart the path ahead of me and tell me where to stop and go and, go and rest. He said, God... He charts my path. Aren't you glad? Man, the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. Man, he pass our chart. If we'll let him, he's got it already worked out. He knows what's going on today. He knows what's going on tomorrow. Don't worry about it. He's got your path charted out. Hallelujah. I don't know what's going to happen in this situation. You just know that you're in God's hands and he's got, he got, he's got good maps He's a good navigator. He's got it already all the road. He's got it all written out anyway. Woo! Hallelujah. I just got to hang on to Jesus. He's going to bring me through this situation. Every moment you know where, every moment you know where I am. Every moment you know where I am. You ever have those times where you just feel like, man, where did God go? Man, it might, that moment might be a week. Man, I just, I haven't felt God at all. Man, I just have, where's the messages now? Where's the book now? Where's the testimony now? It doesn't matter how you feel because we don't live by feelings. We live by faith. Amen. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. Amen. We are on this journey. We don't know where we're going. But God says, I know where you're going. I am leading you. I am guiding you. You keep me close to you. You pray. You ask God to help you out. You stay in God's word. You try to spend time reading the Bible. And God will guide your steps. He said, I'm not leaving you alone when he left those boys that day. He said, hey, listen, don't get all bothered that I'm going. Because if I don't go, I can't send the Holy Spirit, the comforter. Amen. I would have sent him. I'm going to send power, the word, the duminous power. He said, I'm going to send power. Oh, people don't want to, oh, what power are you talking about? I don't know. I, I don't know what you might be thinking, but I know the power that I'm talking about. It's the power of the Holy Spirit Amen. that enables me to live, that enables me to take care of Nicole, that enables me to get up every day and look at a world that looks crazy and say, no matter what's going on, I know God is in my life and he's in charge of everything. And I know I can be victorious. And I know I can stand on his word. Yeah. Oh, Brother Chris, you should be preaching to the lost and to this and to that. I am preaching to the lost. I am telling, I'm telling that God is the antidote. God is the fix. God is the answer. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He hasn't changed. The only one that's changed is we have. America, the, this world, we've gotten off course. We've gotten our eyes off Jesus. We've gotten our eyes on Hollywood. We've gotten our eyes on sports. We've gotten our eyes on everything else. I've got to keep my kids busy. i got to do this. i got to do that. People no longer have a desire to be with God's people or in God's house or anything. That's what the word that they, I guess that's what they're calling the nuns are. They're, they're just a nun. They mean, I, I don't have no affiliation. I don't really even believe they're apathetic. That, whatever, what, case sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. No, that ain't the truth. God's word hasn't changed. 
It's still the same. He's got a blueprint. He's got a plan for all of us. There's a time coming when there's a mandate coming and we'll all have to stand before the living God. And he's got a plan, hallelujah, that we're in this plan. We're not just floating alone, al along and just wondering what's going on. God's got a grand plan. Yes, I don't always understand. I, sometimes I ask Pastor Ron, what do you think about the rapture? What do you think about this? What do you think about it? I don't know. He said, but I know one thing. God's got something worked out. And I just want to make sure my heart's right with God, Chris. And I just want to make sure I'm where I'm supposed to be and I'm letting God just guide me along this way. I don't know how he's going to do it, but I know he's going to do it. And that's all I need to hear sometimes. I don't know how it's all going to happen, but I know it's going to happen. Yes, amen. However he decides it to happen, it's going to happen. Because he doesn't lie. He doesn't change. He's the same as he was back then. He's the same. He said, I know what I'm going to, he said, you know what I'm going to say even before I say it, Lord. I could just, man, you know, just reading this just blows your mind. He said, you know what I'm going to say before I even say it, Lord? Good things, bad things, God knows about it. Even before I say it. You both proceed and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. He said, you precede me and you follow me. He said, you're before me, you're behind me. He said, you place your hand of blessing on my head. Woo, hallelujah. Aren't you glad? I believe this is not just for David back then. I believe he's talking about all the children of God. He places his hand of blessing on us. He's before us. He's behind us. And if God be for us and who can be against us, hallelujah. That really, you need to just look at that all week long and say, he's going before me and he's behind me. Devil, no matter what you try to do to me, whatever you say to me, it don't matter because God is in charge. He's in my captain. He's in front of me. He's fighting my battles. He's aware of my situation. He knows what I'm going through. What just You just read this and say, God, I, after reading this, I just know that you're going to do something in this situation. Amen. You think God he isn't going to do that for you if he's doing all of this? Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to know, excuse me. <clears throat> I love this. He said, I can never escape your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. I just want to tell you right now. The Lord, I really believe that there's some of us are wondering about our children. And I know for a fact because God done it to me. He said, he said, I cannot escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. I want you to know right now, you might be praying for your kids. And maybe you didn't bring them up or you did. But if you've been praying for them, no matter where they are, they cannot escape from his presence. They can't get away from his hand. Oh, I'm so worried about, give them to God. You know, get Jesus on them. Amen. And know that no matter where they are, they can't can't escape from him. Hallelujah. That's why sometimes people get a little more irritable and frustrated because the Holy Spirit's maybe moving in their lives. I always said that, you know, when people start getting irritable and frustrated and this and that, maybe it's just conviction welling up inside of them. The Holy Spirit's, you know, I say if, if someone's preaching a message and they're just sitting there, it's going to one or not the other, you wonder what's going on. But if they're losing fidgeting around and wondering what's going on. Next thing you know, they come up to you. Thank God. Amen. Thank God that the Holy Spirit, he stirs us up. He, he shakes us a little bit. That's his business to do that. Don't, God doesn't want you to stay comfortable in that. He loves you too much. He doesn't want you to stay comfortable in your wealth, in your finances, in your position, in whatever you think you have. God doesn't want you to stay comfortable. He wants you to stay comfortable with him. He wants you to trust in him and him only. And then when you acknowledge that, then, you know, the Bible says, seek you first kingdom of God and his righteousness. He'll add other things on. But God doesn't want you to get comfortable in you. He wants you to get comfortable in him. And sometimes people get uncomfortable because they're trying to trust in themselves. And it's not really helping them. It's not meeting what they need in their lives. People go to other avenues to drink and to do other crazy things that try to fill that void. And the only thing that can fill that void is the Holy Spirit. His peace, His power, His love. He said, if I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the place of the dead, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning and if I dwell in the furthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. 
I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light and the light around me to become night. But even in darkness, I cannot hide from you. To you, the night shines as bright as the day. Shoo! And darkness and light are both alike to you. You may, man, I thought about that. No matter where we are, no matter how dark it may seem, no matter what people think they're doing, it doesn't hide from God. God sees all the things, our secret sins, the things, all the things that are going on in the world, the darkness. Ooh, that's such an ugly place. Ooh, blah, blah, blah. No, what you need to pray is, oh, God, send down your spirit in that place because you love them. You care for them. You, you, you died for them, Lord, and draw them out of that because the Holy Spirit is he's wanting to bring to light all the things that the enemies tried to hide for so long. He wants to reveal Christ. Amen. Amen. That's his job. But even darkness cannot hide from you. The night shines as bright as the day. Darkness and light are both alike to you. You made all, now this is kind of talking about how we were formed before we were even formed. This is where I really believe that we need to preach this more and more and stand up against the atrocities of the abortion and those that have been disregarded as human beings. We're, we are all created in the image of God. And we are all precious in his sight. I heard something not too long ago that they're starting to get these new machines in some of these places when the women come in for counseling talking about, now you may agree or disagree with me, but I don't really care because this is what the Bible says about human life. And they even got machines now when women come in, it's not a great big deal. They can kind of stand in front of this machine and they can actually see the baby moving around and, and doing all kinds of great things without having to go through all kinds of different tests and stuff. And it's actually been causing women to change their mind about doing that and, and, and letting the baby live. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad about that? Amen. Hallelujah. He, and then he says, you made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Now, he didn't say you did this after I came out. He said, you knit me together. In my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderful, complex. Thank you, God, for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous and how well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion. As I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Woo! Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. Shoo! Shazam! Man alive, if that isn't where we're just saying in the Bible that, you know, I, I just read it to you. Yes. Psalms.